Good morning. Good morning. I want to talk to you today about the Anunnaki. And uh, a lot of you Christians don't look at the uh, internet or look at YouTube and look up Anunnaki or New Age religion or to look into the Luciferians, which are very active today. In fact, some of the websites uh, title themselves the Galactic Federation of Lucifer. And I know that you're, I maybe mean, you're not aware of that, but I've been involved in ministry to this stuff, you know, all the way back to the 90s when I started speaking at Roswell. And I was the only ministry there that, that stood up for Christianity. And um, on the 50th anniversary, I was a speaker. And I haven't been back since because they pretty much settled down to this philosophy that I showed you this morning in the videotape. Roswell, New Mexico, which is the world center of UFO study, they believe in the video you just saw. And so I'm a Christian apologetic. I'm trying to respond to this overwhelming uh, Anunnaki presentation. And there are many of them on the internet. So as a Christian, what do we need to know? Well, did you notice their use of the scripture? But if you're a Christian, and you really haven't done what I've suggested. Let me see if I got that up already. If you don't have the uh, interlinear, you don't know how to look these things up. And I think that first verse was Genesis chapter 1. And was it verse 7? Oh, darn. Restart application. Okay, great. All right. Uh, the video mentioned Genesis 1 26 and Genesis 2 7 just to start off and to set their pattern but uh, the reality is when you go look at that you're going to find out that they mistranslated it for you <laughs> so I'm going to go to Genesis 1 26 and I'm going to read it to you okay now, I'm going to take it off the interlinear first, which you as a Christian should have, because when you see videos like this, if you don't look it up for yourself, how do you know that somebody did just overwhelm you and treat you like you're ignorant, you don't know your own Bible, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm not the old way, you know? And it's so interesting because it says, hey, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing. Now, if I hit the interlinear, watch what the word for God is. In fact, in chapter 1, the only word for God is Elohim. And when you click on that, and you say, what does that mean? It says God's plural in the ordinary sense. Especially with the article of the supreme God. Now... We know, because we're Christians, they didn't have revealed to them the Old Testament. Remember, the book of Revelation is what? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we find out that Jesus Christ was the first creation and he created all things. It wasn't Enki, as they say in this article. Because if it was, then why is the New Ages today say, oh, but Jesus Christ was Ningashara. He was the son of Enki. You see how they manufactured that? He either is a creator of God or he isn't a creator of God. But the Bible says he is. He created all things and all things were created through him. So the use of Elohim is really interesting here because to us, we know what that means. We know it means Father, the Father of all, the Creator of all, the Son, Creator of all things, and the Holy Spirit. So that is three. So Elohim is three. And I want to look at the uh, second scripture. <coughs> that they quoted and they abused. Um, two, seven. And the Lord God, Elohim, you see that? But notice before it says, and the Lord. And for Lord, they use the word Jehovah. Now, they will dispute that. They will say Jehovah is Enlil, who we know as Satan. And if, if Jehovah is Enlil, and as we know as Satan, then the whole Bible got it wrong. And then it says, and the Elohim. So the Lord, Elohim, how can you be the Lord, which is singular, and also be the Elohim? 
You can't if you're not a trinity. Does that make sense to you? Amen. Okay, I just want to make sure we're on the same page there uh, before we get going, because some of this stuff is really critical, understanding what they're teaching you. Now, let me go back over here. Um, first of all, notice they mentioned the goddesses had children. Does anybody find that peculiar? Okay, why is God having children? If he is, why did he have to create man? Right. To be a slave. And that's what they created us for, according to their story. If you buy the storyline, we were created to be slaves. I think something else happened. I believe that man was already created. They went in and tweaked with their DNA. And the proof is so obvious. Uh, Adam was almost a thousand years old. And then we go all the way down to Abraham at 180, and then down to you and I, we're lucky to live 70 or 80 years. Am I right? So somebody messed with our DNA. On the other side, the Anunnaki, they were here 500,000 years ago, and Enlil, who is Satan, and uh, Enki, who is Lucifer, they're still here today. So 500,000 years is a drop in the bucket for them. Now, Many Christians consider them the fallen angels. But I don't believe in fallen angels. You're either an angel or you're not an angel. You go through an angel, you ask God to come down, and you're made a watcher. You're no longer an angel. You're not a fallen angel. You're just an angel that's fall, fallen. <laughs> okay? And uh, the Bible doesn't use the word fallen angel. So I, I try to point that out to people. Because they'll say, well, uh, angels can't have sex. And I would say, yes, that's right. But watchers can which I proved in my book, Satan and Lucifer Decoded. Now, okay, so now we've got this situation where gods and goddesses are having children. Why would they need to make us? And one of the first questions I have on my list of Anunnaki questions is, okay, let's suppose that's true. Let's assume what they're saying is the truth. So who made the Anunnaki? I mean, this is a question that's never asked by the New Agers. Oh, well, they just evolved over the last billions of years. Well, why didn't we evolve over the last billions of years? You see, evolution is not the point. The point is creation. Man was created in the image and likeness of the Elohim, by the Son and Holy Spirit. And everybody here has a spirit? Raise your hand. Everybody here that has a body? Raise your hand. Okay? So you are made in the image of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Is everyone here, or one time had an emptiness, where you found out you needed God? Amen. Mm -hmm. We won't hear that with the Anunnaki. You just need to work a little harder in the gold mines. So I asked the question, who made the Anunnaki? Okay, if you can go back 500,000 years, uh, when you say they came here from the Nibiru, I can go back 500 million years. I go back five billion years. I'm not stupid. I'm educated. My mind can go there. Can't yours? Okay, so who created the Anunnaki? Well, they involved from a toad on their planet. Well, that's what they try to tell you here. But I don't believe in that. I just don't think the DNA is there. Um, the next thing I have is, did you notice they always wear the fish outfits? See, that this is reported by primitive man. They don't realize they were under sea UFOs. They have plants under the sea. And you know you've heard reports of that even today. They also have plants, um, whole centers under the earth. As you've heard <coughs> rumored in uh, South America and other places. So it's interesting, if you look at the Catholic Church, doesn't that just look like a bishop with his little fish hat and his tapered cape? I'm going to tell you what it really was. It was probably the Anunnaki, and they had undersea bases, and they didn't take the whole base out every time they wanted to come on land. They just put on a, a, a skin diver's outfit, and that's how the primitive man described it, as a fish skin. Okay? So then they introduced uh, the Kabbalah. Did you see the Kabbalah yes. set up there? Okay, notice they don't have any trouble claiming that the religion of the Jews and even the uh, image of the uh, Kabbalah, which is considered esoteric Judaism, they don't have any problem claiming that that is their religion. 
They're the religion of the Anunnaki. Well, has anybody ever heard that before here? Nobody. So in other words, uh, 10,000 years later, it's the religion of the Anunnaki, but it's a secret. I don't think so. I can tell by your rea reaction, you don't think so either. <laughs> so yeah, you're not as dumb as they make you out to be. Um, so the next one they introduced is Nama, but actually we know her as Nama, and we have her on the uh, prayer dashboard. And uh, what we point out is that she is the woman, the, the witch, that goes after men in ministry, to destroy their ministry. You know, ask the Jimmys, Jimmy Baker, Jimmy Swagger, etc. Can you have? Can you be assigned to Amma? Yes, you can. Is she alive and well today? Well, according to their story, that she is. What's five hundred thousand years to an Anunnaki? And yet, we know when we study the Mayans, for example, we find out that Quetzalcoatl, who's Kukul Khan, who's supposed to be Enki. He crossed into our galaxy, and the exact time was August 13th, 31, 14, before Christ. So how come you got 400,000, 300,000, and then 3,100? There's a problem. They, they can't keep this storyline straight. I don't think they think Christians will read the books. You know, I've read Zachariah Sitch's books. I do all the videos on the internet on the Anunnaki. And because this is the current fake religion that's designed to replace Judaism, replace the Kabbalah, and of course Christianity is a subsequent uh, church of Judaism, and they want to replace the Christians. And how do they do it? They do it with scripture. Shame on them. What happened in the last, you know, 6,000 years? Did you forget to point it out? All of a sudden now we have, you're claiming the Bible was written by you guys? Well, how come then God and the destroyer, who's Satan, are enemies? And we know Satan is in it all. He told us that he created the flood. Well, what was his motive? Because the slaves were discontent? So you wiped out all mankind? That's why he's called the destroyer, the enemy. But he's not God. And um, I'll show you next week more information on that, too. Um, so, did you see the part in there where we had some kind of a, either a Neanderthal man or some hairy woman and hairy man? Okay, first of all, I find the hairy woman very disgusting. <laughs> I'm so glad when women shave their legs. No, and their armpits. Uh, I've been in parts of the world where they don't do that, and I just grew up in a shaved environment. <laughs> so forgive me for that. Okay, DNA. They didn't invent DNA, did they? They say they manipulated it to make us slaves. Well, if we were doing fine and well and they wanted to make us slaves, they dumbed us down. And that's the evidence of, of not only the, the Jewish patriarchs decreasing in age, but even in Egypt it was worse. The first pharaoh of Egypt was, lived 9,000 years. The next one, the next generation, only lived 1,000. Can you hold your questions to the end? Just write it down and I'll take it, okay? Um, so anyways, DNA is not invented by these guys. So if you didn't invent the DNA, you can't claim you're the creator. You may be the manipulator, you may have been the cloner, but you are not the creator. That would not hold up in a court of law. Okay, Enki. They create Enki like he's the creator of mankind. And yet, what was his motives? He wanted to make us slaves so we could work the mines and he could free up the EGG. Now, let me ask you this. Doesn't the Bible say Jesus came to set you free? Mm -hmm. And whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed? Right. Free from what? Being a slave to the Anunnaki? Being a slave to Satan? All these addictions and generational curses? Absolutely. That's what Christianity offers you. Okay, the me. Did you hear the, the term me? M-E? Is anybody else picking up? Those are actually computer programs that told them how to do all this stuff. So if Enki created man from the me, he would just create man from an already generated computer description. 
and I don't believe their computer description or their re reference to the me, but I do know it was some kind of computer tablets. But did they borrow it from the Creator God? And then found out they couldn't get it right? Don't you think it's interesting? It took them, they say in the video, it took them seven times to get it right. But they don't talk about the fact that they got it right and the woman could have babies, did they? So by my count, I have five, six, seven, eight, and if you add one man and woman that are perfect, they can't have children, uh, that would be 10. Now, those of you who are Native American or studied Native American cultures, you know what they teach you is the four worlds. So anytime you see a picture of uh, any kind of Indian symbol, they have the turtle, which is the earth, and then they have the circle with the four moons in it. That represents the four worlds. That describes how God tried this three times and we're in the fourth world now. And next we're going to go to the fifth world and everything will be perfect. That comes out of Native American thought. I didn't invent that. Okay, so, um, I got a, a count of eight, possibly ten, but did you notice that um, number six and seven was a woman and a man, but they couldn't have babies, could they? Didn't it say that? Women couldn't have babies. Well, guess what they say? That's actually Adam and Eve. But we know that Adam and Eve did have children. So somehow, another, a Numa or you know, actually went back and fixed the DNA of Adam and Eve so they could have children. And that's why their count is only seven and not ten like mine, because they reused some of the ones they had. And they don't tell you that. It's like left to your imagination. If you're not sharp, you're going to miss it. So um, that's basically my criticism of the, of the video, because they talk about Enki as if he's a creator God. But he's not creator God. He didn't create the world. They try to make you think he created all things. Well, if he created all things, then he wasn't part of it, was he? How could he have sex with his, uh, his goddesses and produce children? Okay, that, that doesn't compute. There's another hole in their argument. Uh, the fact that uh, they want to create primitive workers. Well, when they created the primitive workers, and then Enlil, who's Satan, he just didn't like them. He wanted the EGG to go back and do their job. So his excuse was, well, they just complain constantly, so I'm going to wipe out all mankind. And isn't that what Native American culture says? <coughs> That's what's happened three times to Forrest? Okay, I'm going to wipe out all mankind. That makes you the enemy of man, the enemy of God. You are the destroyer. And that's where I uh, compute that Enlil is Satan. Now, another interesting aspect on that, when you read the books and you read the tablets, and, and there you can get the exact tablets by typing in Sumerian literature, and you'll get the uh, PDF from museums. But I read Zachariah Sitchin also, who writes a lot of books on this, and in his book, the um, Anunnaki realized, well, they tried to kill all mankind, that failed, and then the gods themselves got in a fight, and they had a nuclear war. And we even have the evidence over here on this planet. We, can, we find a city in India, and we find Sodom and Gomorrah, there's evidence there had been a nuclear bomb dropped there. So the question I have is, if you're gods, why are you fighting? If you're gods, why is there a sibling rivalry between Enlil and Enki? Because in my book, gods don't do that. Even the god that you say is your god, is Enki, told us be angry, but don't let the sun go down in your anger. Does he not? Is that a contradiction of who they are? Do they let the sun go down? No, they let the nuclear bombs go down. <laughs> so, where I come from, that just qualifies you as a god. Even if I'm a primitive worker and I haven't been to college or uh, didn't get through the seventh grade or anything, it doesn't matter. Where I come from, you start dropping bombs on each other and it's not even about us, you're no longer qualified to be my god. Now let me go through some of my questions. First question was, who made the Anunnaki? Okay, if you made us, then who made you? Because your books talk about the creator of all, and they talk about the father of all. 
Creator of all, I think it's 27 times. Father of all, a couple of times. So, they say they're gods, but they believe in a father of all, and they believe a creator of all. And I'm going to show you next Sunday, through the Bible, who that is. So, is there a creator God, like father of all, or creator of all? If there is, you can't call yourself a God. That's like saying, well, I believe in Jesus Christ, he's the son of God, and he, uh, he loves his heavenly father. Okay, Chris, are you a God? If I say yes, to me, as far as I'm concerned, that whole statement is disqualified. Well, yeah, I'm just one of them now. I've been born again. I'm going to be sitting on the four seat in heaven. <laughs> well, I don't see any reference to that. Okay, and then who gave them permission to make us slaves? So they didn't get permission to do it after the flood and it failed. After the flood, after the uh, nuclear weapons, then the Anunnaki get together in council and they say, well, was this what God wanted? Or is this just our faith? And so they have this whole, let's ask the creator of all. But nowhere in their books do they get an answer. And they assume, well, it must be what God intended. However, if you read the book of Enoch, they get Enoch to go ask God if what they did was right or wrong. And God sends Enoch back and says, tell them they're doomed. I'll never forgive them. And I'll never talk to them again. And don't look up to heaven. Never look up to heaven. What you did was an abomination. So whatever they did was negative, and I think that is explaining the fact that we don't live very long. Okay, who gave them permission to modify humans? What form were they? Why did they call us primitive man? So, if you're going to be messing in the uh, chemistry lab, you know right now with clones, we can actually create clones that are pretty smart but they're not intuitive. And many people who produce clones themselves will admit they probably don't have a soul. So if that's true today, why wasn't that true when they were messing around? That's a very interesting question, isn't it? Why does the Bible of Enoch, or the book of Enoch say the Anunnaki did not get the creator of all his permission, and in fact, he refused to talk to them? All you do is read the book of Enoch. Uh, you can start on chapter 10 if you want. If you want to skip a lot of extra reading. And you can just read it yourself. I'll show it to you next week. Or uh, as I did last week. Okay. Why did they dumb down our DNA so we would live shorter lives? <coughs> That's control issues. Anytime you deal with somebody who's dealing in control, even if it's your pastor, that's witchcraft. You know, people were shocked last week. I said, look, if you get saved, you don't have to tithe. Actually, you tithe so the church survives, but you don't tithe to God because he doesn't want your offerings. He wants a broken heart. And they were really shocked that I said that. But the fact of the matter is, this is really what God wants. He wants you to be set free. You don't have to be a slave to tithing. I see some shocked faces. Yeah, tithing is good. I tithe but I don't have to. And I know I can tithe and still be blessed. And guess what? I can still go to hell because I never had a broken, contrite heart. The purpose of tithing is God says, test me and I will show you. So you do the tithing and you get blessed. You say, man, he must be real. I should give my heart to him. A lot of people don't go to part two. <laughs> they don't give their heart to him. Okay. Why did they dumb down our DNA so we can live shorter lives? I think I explained that. Why the nuclear wars? If you're gods, why are you fighting amongst yourselves? And why do you use such weapons of mass destruction? It's exactly what the Muslims want today. They want nuclear war bombs, don't they? Isn't that the whole failure of President Obama with Iran right now? He gave them, uh, I think it was $500 million. And then he gave them permission in 10 years to go ahead and build a nuclear bomb. <laughs> okay. Um, how many species are there? Are you saying the Akai is it? The, a the Anunnaki are it? Um, I read all kinds of New Age stuff to say there are more than 82 identified aliens visiting the planet. Well, if they're not all Anunnaki, then why does the Anunnaki say that they're the gods and they create us and they own the earth? 
And it's, it's what I call plagiarism. Okay, now, um, why do the aliens war with each other? And we have evidence of that. You can go on YouTube and type in um, you know, NASA and uh, it war. And they'll show you pictures of the UFOs fighting, shooting at each other. So why is it that clones do not have a soul? Oh, well, if you're evolving, wouldn't you have a soul? How can you be an animal? Let's say we started out as apes, or even the ooze. <laughs> the ooze to apes to man. Okay, at what point in there did they get a soul? Do you think that the ooze have a soul? I don't think so. And this is one of the fab fabrications of uh, what I consider the whole evolutionary spin. There's no proof of uh, evolution. And what intelligent person doesn't believe in adaptation? We do. We believe in adaptation. So, why do we use BCE, which is before the Christian era, and not ANC, before the Anunnaki era? But they just get left out of history? No, because they got thrown off the planet after two nuclear wars and messing with the DNA of man, God says, that's it, you're done, you're off the planet. And that's why they haven't been back. That's why we just get visitations. They come here for a short period and split before the angels can chase them off. So, why the intolerance and impatience, and why do you treat us as if we're stupid? Now, if Reed and I have a child, that child's as smart as, or if not smarter. In our case, Nick and Nora are both smarter than us, so we know it. It's just like a, a, a default, you know, okay, they're smarter than us, maybe they have a point, you know. But uh, why would they create us? And they even talk about, they'll even tell you that Enki had sex with Eve. Yeah, he created Cain. Okay, well, he must have been an idiot too then, huh? So these stories they tell you uh, are wrong. They'll say that Satan had sex with Eve and produced Cain. And yet the Bible tells us that it was Adam and Eve that um, had intercourse and produced children. So what do you believe, their spin or what's written in the Bible? Um, so they have a lot of intolerance and patience. Have you ever talked to an atheist? They're probably in that form. They hate you. It's not just that there is no God. They hate you because you're so stupid you think that. Hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Don't you feel the hate, the disgust? You know, you know they, they talk to you like you don't understand science. Um, you know, I'm a man of science. I got college degrees. It doesn't mean anything. You get college degrees and look at all this stuff. So, oh yeah, Lucifer. Yeah, that's right. I want to follow Lucifer. Well, you're an idiot. <laughs> Maybe they're right. Um, so why the intolerance? Why do you say Jesus is? That's a good question. How come you talk about Jesus and tell us he's Ningashata? And, uh, and if he is, <clears throat> who you say he is, why don't you do what he said? You must be born again. That's an easy, simple question, isn't it? If he is the son of Enki and you sent him down here, to guide man into a better direction, then you should be doing what he said too. And you should not be knocking it down and saying that, you know, uh, Jesus was, is with us on the UFO ships and he'll get it all straightened out. Then why does he come down and get it straightened out now? We, if you go to the internet, you have all kinds of visitations of near-death experience where people see Jesus personally, one-on-one. -on -one. You have all kinds of uh, evidence in the uh, Islamic world that people are praying and Jesus appears to them. So why don't he appear to us right now during this sermon? If I'm wrong, just show me the evidence. I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the Son of God. And I believe he came to set me free from the Anunnaki. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, a couple more. And done. Uh, <clears throat> So who do you say Jesus is? Um, why all the hypocrisy? You believe in the creator of all, but you rebuke us for believing in the same thing. Doesn't Jesus constantly refer to his Father in heaven? 
and he uses potter for father in heaven or else. I'll show you that in the scripture next week. But today I just wanted to talk casually about what's going on. So uh, basically, you're hypocrites. The Anunnaki are hypocrites. They'll even tell you, oh, the lost years of Jesus. He ran around in India and we were training him to send him back so he could be your Messiah. Well, okay, you were there? I thought you were kicked off the planet. You, know, you think you live in some high place in the Himalayas? Well, send me an invitation. I want to see this. But there's no invitation. In fact, you even go near the Himalayas. If you're not Himalayan, you're going to have a permit. So, who are the angels? If the Anunnaki are not the, not the angels, then who are the angels? And how many here believe in angels? How many have been helped by angels, even in a crisis? And yet they never talk about the angels. Here's another thing they never talk about. Devils and demons. Never bring it up. And they never talk about sin and how you need to ask your father of all, your creator of all, to forgive you. You know, it's, it's interesting. Now, I'm going to close it up here, but I want to take some questions. But I hope you see what's going on because, honestly, um, this stuff is thick on the Internet. It's thick on YouTube. And it's thick in the colleges. They have all these authors come to the colleges and teach this stuff to the college kids. And they come out of the thinking, oh yeah, you know, you, you guys, you Christians, you know what you're talking about. That was really the Anunnaki. And there you are, nobody told you about this stuff, and you can't even defend yourself. What if it's your own kid coming home from college? Hey, I'm glad you're home for the weekend. You want to go to church with on Sunday? No, I don't, I don't believe that stuff. Jesus is Nigashata. You know, one author I have shows that Jesus is Hermes. Jesus is, can be anybody but Jesus. And yet they say, he was Enki's son and he sent us down here to get us on the right track. Well, if that's true, then stop knocking Jesus. Don't you see the duplicity in that? If I'm for Jesus, I can't be also saying, well, he's just another Anunnaki God, but you didn't know it. Especially since we don't believe in gods. G-O-D-S. We believe in one God, creator of all, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and open up for questions, and I want to pray with you. I hope this is beneficial because I've thought a lot about doing it or not doing it, but I've been talking about it, and I don't know that a lot of you don't have the background. And you're certainly, and I respect this, you're certainly not going to go to the Internet and type in the Anunnaki or the Lost Book of Enki or any of the other books and find out what the truth is. Because you're like, well, I don't believe that stuff. Well, how do you know what it is you don't believe in? So if you get attacked or your kids come home from college or your kids come home from, you know, all of the bad drugs and the bad alcohol parties and spring break, and they're now talking about the Anunnaki, you don't know how to respond. You know, so what says that in, you know, Genesis uh, 1, was that verse 2? 26. Genesis 1, 26. It says that again in Genesis 2, 7. And you're like, what? And you've got to go look it up. But if you're a Christian and you don't have the end of the Dr. Bible, you're just going to think they're telling the truth. You know, maybe, I, maybe I should reinvestigate this. And my answer is yes. <laughs> reinvestigate it. But ask Christians, people who are solid in the faith, people who know who Jesus Christ really is. And he is the only Son of God. He sits at the right hand of the Father. Now there's an interesting statement. If he sits at the right hand of the Father, who's the left hand? If he's Enki, or his son, and the left hand is Enlil, then you got a picture of the Father and the Son as Satan and Lucifer. You see how important this is? And yet, most Christians don't even know there's a difference between Satan and Lucifer. How can you be the angel of darkness and also be the bright morning star? How can you be the old world order and also be the new world order. Would you have some major management redecision? That's not going to happen. So as Christians, you need to be informed. You need to know what's going on. And you don't need to be afraid. We have the truth. 
Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. And it's the truth. So let me just close it down there. Anybody have any questions? Mark. One thing that I noticed with this, even in the description there, uh, one of the questions uh, about uh, why did they dumb down our DNA? Well, what I see in it is, just like you said, they're in the universities. A lot of these people are not grounded in the Word. No. So when they're thrown with something like this, and they use Scripture that they tweak for their... They confuse the people, and that's what it's all about, is to confuse you. Right. So you go, well, maybe God did do this. Maybe that is a oh God. Yeah. Maybe I can believe that. Um, the re-aliens believe that Ra'el came down and spoke to their leader now, who is also Ra'el. And uh, told them uh, and corrected all this stuff. And said the Elohim are them. They're the aliens. Okay, well, how do you fight that? You can't. It's going to become a cult belief. And that's why we as Christians, you know, from day one of receiving our salvation, get grounded in the Word. Right. And, and this stuff is available to, like you said, your kids. Who are uh, you know doing uh, pot and they're doing alcohol and they're doing drugs and mushrooms and etc. I won't name them all, and they come home and now all of a sudden they know better than you. You're like, well, you don't know anything, but how do I tell you without breaking your heart? Because you're so convinced you're right. Well, you can use my sermons if you can get them to listen to them, which I doubt. But people, they're going to go to hell with that kind of thought. Yes. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier about uh, um, the lifespan of uh, or life cycles of humans shortening. Right. Uh, when I was a young, um, I heard some uh, creation scientists talking about how when the flood hit, um, it actually altered the atmosphere and such that before the flood, the whole earth was like a tropical paradise. Um, but because of the effect that it had on it, um, pre flood, it, it held back more of the sun's radiation so that people actually aged slower and stayed alive longer. How come the Anunnaki are over 500,000 years old, Tom? They're talking about, I'm talking about human beings, not Anunnaki. Well, I'm talking about Anunnaki too. They live here. How come that same radiation isn't killing them? In fact, I even have reports where they don't stay on the earth for very long because they begin to age. Okay, and I'm going to tell you, that story that you heard, that is just a hypothetical. That's somebody who tried to figure out what happened, so therefore this must have happened, because the earth changed and people started getting older. But that is such a lame description of what happened. How can you go be a pharaoh and live for 9,000 years, and your next generation only lived 1,000 years? About the same length that, that Adam lived. And then after that, it went down too. How did you get the first 9,000? And see, they never answer that. Right. And I know, I, I, I work with you know college professors all the time. Yes, go ahead. That story is, I found it once in the Jehovah's Witness uh, book. Yeah. Have you ever heard the story of the... Uh, the Mormons that Jesus and Satan are brothers. Okay, why then when he comes, do they ask the mountains to fall on them and protect them and save them from the Lamb of God? How come all of a sudden the Lamb of God is a big deal to these people? And they're terrified because they knew they believed the wrong thing. They just know it instantly in their heart and they're filled with terror. So I, you know, I... I always wonder, like, why does the people, why does the church challenge these things? Instead, instead, we'll, you know, spend an hour talking about how you can get out of your depression. Well, you can't get out of your depression if you don't know that Jesus died to set you free. Right. If you're depressed, as far as you're concerned, you're never going to be free. Your question is, can I get more meds? Not can I be free, but with Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. And you can actually ask the Holy Spirit to help bring you out of these things. And he did. He brought me out of all those things. 
Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm still a sinner. But sinners get to go to heaven if you know Jesus. It's like having the best attorney in town. <laughs> yes, Jen. Yeah. Well, no matter what spin they put on it, even the Anunnaki, it's just really rebellion in their hearts against the one true God. And it says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and idolatry. Yes. Because notice they want to be worshipped. They can't just be witches. They want you to worship them because of their tricks and their magic and all their technology. Thank you, Jan. That's really good. Mark, did I answer your question? I mean, Tom? Oh, yes. I did? Okay. Yeah, like I said, it's all fabrication. You know, professors think because they're a professor of history at Stanford, they can say anything they want. Yes, go ahead. Well, in answering that, that also reveals to me that these are, once again, I, I almost want to call them atheist, atheist Christian scientists <laughs> who, try to t who try to explain uh, away history in some way to hide all this stuff because they don't right. accept what actually happened. Well, again, um, they, they will try to twist your mind. God created us from nothing. Okay? And then they put you in an environment. It's called Earth. And yeah, we adapt to that. But I've never had anybody give me an honest, clear answer why we have different races. Does anybody ever give you a clear answer to why we have red, yellow, black, and white and they are precious in his sight? Tell uh, Again, when I was a kid, uh, <laughs> they, I, I'm sure there's some crazy stuff, but the power of Balaam and God changed up the languages, they, they theorized that God changed up the races as well. Okay, and I'm going to show you next Sunday that it was the sons of Ham that were in Babylon. How come he didn't change their color? Uh, one of the things that I'm seeing with this, and I think it was brought in then through Allah, Lucifer, uh -huh. is how all of this is associated with Muslims. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it, how it all goes right back to the Babylon and the First Nation, which was Amalek. You know, if you had this whole culture of Anunnaki, why would you come along as Amalek and be called the First Nation? Converted that. Yeah. So you weren't the First Nation? That was just your spin. And you know, a lot of this goes on in the Bible, too, and, and I've just got to tell you, I discovered years ago that the enemy will infiltrate the church. Look at the Catholic Church, some of the outrageous things they believe. And you know, and they get in there and they change doctrine or they rewrite this scripture or that scripture, or they just take it out like they did the Epistle of Barnabas and the Book of Enoch and Jasher and Jubilee and, and the Shepherd of Hermes and all these other uh, books that I've read that used to be in the Canaanites Bible, they took it out, but because they control everything, it could be three or four hundred years before somebody says, whatever happened to the book of Enoch? I don't know. <laughs> they got it in the library. You know, but we, uh, when we pulled out the book of Enoch, we got it out of the uh, Ethiopian Bible. And it was canonized all along. And I remember people requesting from the Catholic Church to get a copy of the book of Enoch. And they would say, well, we don't have a copy. We don't think it exists. And then the book comes out in a canonized version of the, of the Bible to the Coptic Ethiopian Christians. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, now I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, we have a copy in the library. <laughs> I just thought, I just like laughed like it's just by tears. It's like, you guys, you can't even cover up properly. Yeah, we have all the truth there. We just need to, to read it. And that goes back to what God said. The truth will set me free. Amen. You know, when you read all these books that were taken out, yeah. and you see how they're tied, and then you start reading why they took them out, because the bishops were doing bad things to the little boys. So we don't want y'all to know about yeah, that. Yeah, that's what Barnabas said. And so they just kicked Barnabas right out, you know. Because the Catholic Church does have a problem with pedophilia. Does anybody know that? Has anybody heard that? Why does the church, the only church of Jesus Christ, also is pedophilia essential? Because they don't let them have wives. 
They don't let them have wives, but maybe they find those kinds of people to become priests. Maybe they're recruited. 